The Kraft Food Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what goes on in Summerfield. Every afternoon at 545, a boy on a bicycle riding down the street, no hands, flings a folded newspaper onto Gildersleeve's front lawn. By 546, Leroy is usually to be found flat on his stomach in the living room, Deep in the doings of Dick Tracy. This particular afternoon, however, he gets no farther than page one when... Yup! Hey, Mark! Hey, Bertie! Hey, anybody! What do you want, Leroy? Come on down, quick! I gotta read this. I gotta read this. What's all the fuss about? Hubba, hubba! What do you want? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta read this. Leroy, you called me all the way downstairs. What for? How do you like that? Stuck the guy in a truck and tipped him to the dead letter office. His partner! What in the world are you talking about? Oh, just a second. I'll read this. Oh, for goodness sake. Hey, watch the movies. Let me see the movie tape. Let go. Leroy. Hey, cut it out. Uncle Mort has told you, Leroy, not to leave a newspaper on the floor. I'm not leaving it on the floor. I'm reading it. But you don't have to hog it. I've got to first let go. Leroy. Now see what you did. <laughs> now, children, that ain't no way to behave. If your uncle was... Hey, what are they call a bank robber? Bank robber? What bank? They call him Salinas. Talk to him, Moran. Here, I'll read it to you. Look out, Mark. Get your foot off. George Lockjaw Moran, 39, bank robber and suspected murderer, wanted by the Chicago police, was apprehended today by county authorities. My goodness. Caught in a cabbage patch, he shot it out with sheriff's deputies in a blazing gun battle till fell from behind with a hole by Vern Moody, 68-year-old local farmer. Well, what do you know? When interviewed later, Father Moody's only comment was, he was walking on my cabbages. <laughs> well, good evening, all. What else does it say, Leroy? Go on, read it. Yes, go on. I said good evening. Handcuffed and placed under heavy guard, <laughs> Moran's attitude was described by his captors as boldly defiant. Uh, uh, good evening, Bertie. Yes, go on, Leroy. <laughs> He, he is said to have boasted that no hit jail was strong enough to hold him. Moran's record, according to police, Chicago police, is one of the most daring and cold... Listen, parties. I'm home. Oh, hi, Uncle. Hi, Uncle. I don't like having to call attention to my presence, but I said good evening. And when I say good evening, I expect a civil answer. Good evening. That's better. Uh, good evening, Bertie. Good evening, Mr. Gilfrey. Pick the newspaper up off the floor, Leroy. Pick yourself up, too. Hey, did you hear the news, Uncle? They caught a bank robber in Salinas. He was hiding out in an oil camp. Here, tell us all about it in the paper. I already know all about it. In fact, they drove a man through town this afternoon on his way to the jail. Don't tell me you saw him. No, but Mr. Peavy saw him, and I just saw Mr. Peavy. Yeah. Oh, Uncle, what do you look like, Uncle? Did you look mean? Did he have a gun? Was there blood on him? Was he all... I told you I didn't see the man myself, Leroy. Where were they taking him? To the county jail. You mean they got him right here in Summerfield? Oh, boy. The jail's not in Summerfield. It is, too, isn't it, Uncle? It's right on the town line. Gee, I wish they'd let you go out and look at the guy. Now, stop talking about it, Leroy. You're getting Bertie all alarmed. Look at her. Yes. <laughs> There's really nothing to be scared of, Bertie. The man is under lock and key. I ain't scared. Old Rob will come near me. I'll let him have it. <laughs> That's the <a> spirit. <laughs> she would, too. <laughs> By the way, Bertie, I have a club meeting this evening, the Jolly Boys. So any time you want to serve dinner... Oh, yes, sir. Won't be but a little while now that you're home. Leroy, if I could trouble you for my chair. Oh, sure. I didn't know you wanted to sit here. Sit down, Unc. Now, the newspaper, if you please. Oh, sure. I didn't know you wanted to read it. Yes, yes. What do you think they'll do to him, Unc? Will you please stop hanging over the back of my chair? Oh, sure. You want to wear out the mohair? What was that, my boy? I say, what do you think they'll do to him, Monk? They'll undoubtedly hang him. Oh, boy. So let that be a lesson to you. Lesson about what? Just let it be a lesson, that's all. I never saw a 
murderer. Did you want? Did you ever see a murderer? Once and for all, Leroy. I don't want to hear any more about murderers. Now drop that newspaper and eat your dinner. We don't bring newspapers to the table anyway. You do. I'm different. Can you reach that buzzer, my dear? Here. Maybe I can. Where is it? Where is the confounded? Ouch! Uh, sorry, my dear. I didn't know that was your foot. <laughs> Stand back and maybe I can. Where is it? It's always been right under the chandelier. Then somebody's moved the chandelier. Oh, the heck with it. Bertie! Huh? We ought to get a bell. Can you imagine? He put him in a trunk. I bet when they opened the trunk... I said no more, Leroy. No more. You understand? I don't want to hear any more about it. Okay. Uh, salt, please, Marjorie. It's right in front of you. Oh. Uh, so white. I didn't see it. <laughs> Did anything happen in school today, Leroy? No. Marjorie? Not a thing. So much for school. I hope nobody comes to me, Lord, because there ain't any. Oh? I got some peas left, and I got... Wait a minute, buddy. Quiet. Listen. Sounds like a siren. It's the county jail. Jailbreak! Jailbreak! What? I told you, he said I couldn't hold it. Leroy. Oh, boy, it's locked on my way, and he busts in jail. Oh, boy! Shut up, Leroy. You too, Marjorie. I didn't say it. Let's keep our heads here. <laughs> Turn off the lights. Oh, no, no, we can't see if we do that. Now, nothing to be afraid of, you understand? Nothing to be afraid of. Bertie, there's nothing to be afraid of. Leroy, run upstairs and get my gun. Your gun? I'm going to keep it. You know perfectly well where I keep it. Now go get it. Okay. Did I think the bullet's too much? Certainly. Don't be an idiot. No, wait a minute. Somebody's liable to get hurt. Just bring the gun. Now, what good is a gun without bullets? Bring the bullets, too. They're in the drawer with my car. Hello. Why don't you get them? Don't stand there and ask me foolish questions. Now keep cool, everybody. There's nothing to be afraid of. Marjorie, go see if the back door is locked. What for? Do as I say. Bertie, get, my, get me my air raid help. Mr. Gilfrey, excuse me, but ain't you getting yourself a little bit excited? I'm merely trying to take precautions, Bertie. Ye gods, everybody else stands around here scared to death. Well, what would anybody want to come here for? The man's a dangerous criminal, Bertie, and he's looking for a hiding place. He might break in here and use us all as hostages. Let's not get excited, though. Let's keep cool and use our heads. Here's the gun, I'm Shit, sure. don't point that gun. <laughs> Always hand a man a gun by the barrel. And point it at me? Telephone! Don't answer it. It might be a trap. How could it be a trap? Well, let me answer it. Well, go ahead. Hello? Oh, so hard. Is that you? Yes, it's me, Lena. <laughs> Call me back later, Lena, will you? I'm busy right now. Yes, I'm here. Oh, no, no, I'm scared to death. I wish you'd come over and protect me, will you? Uh, you come over here. <laughs> oh, no, I'm scared to go out of the house. Now, Leela, that's not a thing to be scared of. It's just a little jailbreak, probably. <laughs> yeah. I'd come right over, only I uh, have to wait here for an important phone call. Oh, Lord, Lord, please, for Leela. Uh, don't worry, Leela. I'll keep an eye on you from here. I'll be watching out the window every minute. Hee. <laughs> Who are you expecting a phone call from, huh? A uh, phone call? I'm not expecting any phone call. But you told us you answered me. Oh, that. Well, after all, I'm a deputy. At a time like this, you never know. I might get a call from the chief of police. It's my duty to stand by anyway. Here's your air raid helmet, Miss Gilsey. Oh, thank you, Bertie. I guess I <laughs> might as well put it on, just in case. Shrapnel or something. <laughs> <laughs> Straps a little tight. I didn't know if you'd be wanting your flashlight and your whistle. Yeah, so thanks. I I, I'd better take them. Yeah. Don't be a dog, Bob. Sure, life may pull you. <laughs> you may be right. Guess I'll just take the whistle. That's <laughs> working. Yeah. Take a look out the window, my boy. See if you can see any prowlers around Mrs. Ransom's house. Only keep your head down. Okay. I checked all the doors, Uncle. They're all locked. Uh, good girl. Just a little precaution. Unnecessary, probably. But what do you see, Leroy? Mrs. Ransom's got every light in the house on. Uh, guess she must be a little nervous. <laughs> hey, that's women for you. <laughs> well, now what do we do? Just wait, I guess, till the chief calls, if he does. Why don't you call him? There's an old saying, my boy. Let sleeping dogs lie. Still, I might just give him a buzz and find out what's going on. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, hand me the phone. Nuts. Smell her, Uncle Nervous. <laughs> Police 
Mr. Foreman. I'd like to speak to Chief Gates, please. This is him. Chief, this is Gildersleeve. What's all the excitement over the county jail? I heard the siren. Oh, pay no attention to that. It's just Sam Coombs. Coombs? You know, shipless Sam, the town drunk. Somebody left the door open and he walked out. (laughs) Well, is that all? I don't know why they ever let him in in the first place or why they want him back. Well, thanks, Chief. Oh, say, uh... Yeah? Will I be seeing you at the Jolly Boys tonight? You bet your sweet life. I lost last week, remember? Oh, Oh, so you did. Well, we're holding our session down here at the station house tonight instead of at the club. I'm sort of stuck on the desk here, and all the other fellows agreed, so if it's all right with you... I'll be there, Chief. Just have your money where you can get at it, that's all. So long. What did he say, Uncle Moore? Yeah, what did he say? Well, children, it's just as I thought. There's nothing to worry about. It wasn't the bank robber that escaped at all. It was just... <laughs> Who's that? Hello, Gildersleeve speaking. <laughs> A noise, you say? Well, just you sit tight there, kiddo, and I'll be right over. I'll be right over. Oh, Throck Martin, you're so brave. Yeah. <laughs> the minute I saw you standing here so handsome in your air raid helmet on you, I had nothing to fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, and when you went charging into those bushes like that... Well, I was only doing my duty, Leela. I'm a deputy, you know. Oh, but he might have shot you if he'd been there. Ours is not the reason why. Ours is but to do or die. Why, before this night is over... Yeah? Well, it's him or me, that's all. Oh, Jock Martin, you will come back. You will come back to me. Come back? Hmm, I might. What time? <laughs> I mean, you will come back alive. Oh, yeah. I'd ask you to come in and stay a while right now, only I know you being a deputy and all. Yeah, duty comes first, unfortunately. But I'll keep a light burning in my window for you. And when you return... Yeah? Well... To the victor belong the spoils. <laughs> I'm off, Leela. Homemakers tell us that one of their hardest jobs is to keep getting variety into meals. For example, those daily vegetables, they do get a little monotonous when served the same way day in and day out. And here's where that smooth-melting cheese food, Velveeta, comes to your rescue. Vegetables taste new and different when topped with a glorious Velveeta sauce, a sauce that's so easy to make. Just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of a double boiler. Then stir in one quarter cup of milk. There you have a grand, smooth sauce packed with a rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, ready to add golden goodness and variety to almost any vegetable. It works wonders with leftovers, too. And don't forget, Velveeta sauce is such a big help with Lenten main dishes, eggs, fish, or macaroni. For Velveeta helps supply high-quality, complete protein, milk minerals, food energy, riboflavin, and vitamin A. And for snacks and sandwiches, nutritious Velveeta spreads or slices perfectly. Insist on genuine Velveeta when you shop, for it's the cheese food of craft quality. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, condemned by the widow Ransom to an heroic role, or at least obliged to pretend he's a hero for a couple of hours, Gildersleeve strolls into the Summerfield Police Station, which for tonight is the headquarters of the Jolly Boys Club. Well, greetings, Keith. Hi, Floyd. Good evening, Commissioner. Hi, Commissioner. How'd you like a nice outside cell with hot and cold bread and water? <laughs> American plan. Yeah, well, sounds good to me. How's business, Chief? Caught the shipless Desperado yet? No, Sam's still at large. I have to sit here till somebody rounds him up. Well, I've seen worse places to sit around. 
Nice, comfortable chair, cut the door. There was only a copy of the police today. That's for barbershop. Oh. Speaking of barbershop, how's about a little harmony, boys? Come on, commit. Down by the old... Fellas! 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 Please. Chief, we need a base. Oh, fellas, I don't want to be a wet blanket or anything, but... Maybe we'd better not sing in here. Why not? Well, after all, this is a police station, not a joint. Uh, wishful thinking. Wouldn't... <laughs> Wouldn't want people to think there's some kind of a brawl going on here. Well, how do you like that? The chief invites us over here as a favor to him. We got no coke to drink. We can't sing. Why don't you play a little poker? No objection to that. Poker's no good for three people. Where the dickens are, Hooker and Phoebe? They'll be along. Why, they can't be here promptly. Maybe we should start a system of fines for being late. I'd hate to try to collect them from our members. Hey, look what I found. Handcuffs. Come here, Commissioner. I'll flip the bracelets on you. Don't you come near me with those things. Careful, Floyd. Oh, I can't hurt nothing. How do they work? Well, I guess you just slip your wrist through here and then you... Come on, Commissioner. Lock me up. Huh? How? Just snap and shut, that's all. Huh? Well, that's the way you want it. Hey, uh, look, Chief, I'm handcuffed. Yeah. What do you know? Floyd Munson, the notorious hold-up man. How do I look, Commissioner? Criminal. <laughs> Hidden? <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, well. Take them off, will you, Chiefy? Now, let me see. I wonder where I put the key to those cubs. Chief! <laughs> you starved to death. Yeah, <laughs> golly, I thought I had it right here. Oh, come on. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Floyd. We can have them filed off in the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Chief, have a heart. The wife, she'd never believe it was an accident. And then when I convince her, she'd never let me hear the last of it. She'll call up her mother 60 miles away to tell her about it. Oh, have a heart, Chief. Well, if it's going to be as tough as all that. Come here. Oh. There, you're a free man. Boy. But don't go breaking any laws. Oh, I won't. Say, it feels good to get them off. I'd hate to do a real stretch in them things. Uh, <clears throat> Summerfield Police Station, Captain O'Benny talking. Give me that. Date's talking. No sense of humor. Uh, uh, oh, hello, Al. Never uh, listen to the radio. No, no signs of Sam yet. I'll call you if we bring him in. Oh, Al Hoffmeyer out at the county jail. Don't look good for him, you know, having Sam walk in and out of the place like it was a, a powder room. No, I don't. I, I hope they got a couple of fellas watching Lockjaw Moran. Hell's watching Moran, all right. He's the only prisoner out there now. Say, Floyd, how about a few hands at the casino till the others get here? Huh? Okay, by me. Deal a card. Well, here's Peavy. Peavy. Hi, Peavy. Good evening, gentlemen. Manipulating the hair for you. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing just that. Come on, pull up a chair, Peavy, so we can get started. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just came by to tell you I don't believe I can sit in tonight. <laughs> Can't sit in? We need you for a quorum, Peavy. Why don't you want to stay? Oh, it's not that I don't want to stay, but whenever there's a jailbreak at the county jail, Mrs. Peavy gets nervous. She wanted me to close up the store and come home an hour ago. But there's nothing to be nervous about, Peavy. There's no jailbreak. Just Sam Coombs walked out when nobody was looking. Oh, that's who it is? Sure, you remember. <laughs> you remember Sam, Peavy. Wouldn't hurt a fly. Yeah, what do you say that? <laughs> he used to take a nip now and then, I've heard. Take a nip? He was a town drunk whenever he had the money. Well, I don't see what that's got to do with it. He's just a harmless bum, Peavy. Mrs. Peavy has no reason whatsoever to be nervous. You just call her up and tell her. <laughs> Doesn't talk much like a married man, does it, Floyd? <laughs> you sure don't. For your information, Commissioner, when a woman's nervous, it don't do any good to explain she's wrong. It only makes it worse, huh, Peavy? That's been my experience. Mine, too. Ah, uh, women have got you all buffalo. Tell you what, Peavy, let me call Mrs. Peavy and explain this no, to her. No, 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 thank you. It's bad enough when I do it myself, huh? <laughs> I'd better be running along. What a club. If I ever get married, Come on, Buffalo. Here, Judge Hooker. Come on, Judge. Now you've got enough prayers without me. We still need you. Greetings and salutations, jolly boys. Come on, you old goats. You're holding up the business of the evening. A thousand apologies, gentlemen. Yeah, I'd better be getting home to Mrs. Peavy. Good night, Judge. Peavy, what's the matter? His wife's nervous on account of the jailbreak. Entirely unnecessary, Peavy. The escaped person is only Sam Coon. Just call up Mrs. Peavy and tell her to go to sleep. Please, darn bachelors. I think I'd better go, Judge. If I... Yeah, who's that? 
Oh, fellas, is the chief here? Sam Coombs, huh? Grab it. Get the handcuffs. I don't need any handcuffs. All I want is a ride back to the county jail. Well, you can darn well walk. Walk all the way out there? Well, you walked in. Why'd you bust out this time? I heard there was a Betty Grable picture in town. <laughs> Turned out it was last week, so I might as well go back. You got a cigarette, Chief? No. Oh. You coming in here wanting all kinds of service? And you fellas got a cigarette for Sam? Well, I don't know if I'm smoking his brand, but here. Oh, thanks. Might as well take a couple, huh? Why not? Light? Oh, thank you. Well, well, Sam Cruz. Remember me, Sam? I sure do, Judge. I'll never forget you. You gonna drive me out there, Chief? No, oh, I suppose I'll have to. Oh, gone you. I've got other things to do besides chauffeur you around. Hello, Harry. Well, I'll take you out there after a while, if you behave yourself. Okay, fellas, let's get down to business. Peavy, call the wife and tell her the situation is under control, will you? Come on, Floyd, you deal. No wild games, no high-low, joker for aces, straights, and flushes. Okay. You're playing poker, fellas? What do you think we're doing? Somebody would lend me a couple of dollars, you know, six players. Well, of all the nerve. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's a better game that way, Chief. Here, Sam, here's a deuce. Remember where you got it. Thanks. Let's start a little spit in the ocean. What do you say? You want me to do? Now, don't start making the rules. Where's Peavy? Oh, telephoning. Hello, oh, dear. They caught that criminal, so I think I'll stay down here and chat with the boys for a little while. <laughs> All right, Floyd, what do you got? Queens and eights. Nuts. I thought you were bluffing. I know I have queens and eights all along. Who asked you? <sighs> Shove over, Sam. Don't get so close. <laughs> Say, is that clock right, Chief? Sure, it's right. It's electric. Well, I think I'll quit, fellas. Quit? Why, it's only 10.30. I don't care. I'm tired. This doesn't seem like you, Gilday. You're losing, aren't you? A little. Fact is, and, well, I've got a headache. Headache, he says. Man's losing money, looks at the clock, and quits the poker game. He ain't got a headache, he's got a date. It could be the same thing. Well, it's not a date, exactly. But this lady was a little nervous when Sam here busted out of the county jail, so I told her I'd look in on her on my way home. Has she got a friend? Yes. <laughs> Sam, watch your step. Who is it, Gildy? Anyone I know? None of your business. Oh, I'm your friend, Gildy. We're all your friends. Well... If you should happen to see Leela Ransom, don't tell her I've been sitting around here playing poker, will you? Well, what does she think you've been doing? Well, I told her I was a deputy. She may have got the impression that I was out on a manhunt. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, you fought the old son of a gun. <laughs> 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 well, you know how it is. So if you fellows will excuse me, I... I guess if you're quitting, I might as well drive my prisoner out to the county. Oh, all right. Wait a minute, fellas. I got an idea. Let's all go along with Gildersleeve on his date. Yeah, why not? Good idea. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, no, you got me wrong, Commish. I'm thinking of a way to build you up. What makes you think I need it? Well, you hear it, will you? Now, look, the chief has to take Sam back to jail. Well, why don't we all drive past your lady friend's house and tell her you caught this desperate criminal single-handed? Uh, talking about me? Yeah, you. And you'll be right there in handcuffs, Sam, to prove it. Floyd, I think you've got a wonderful idea. Make a hero out of you, Commissioner. Well, I don't know, fellas, if anybody was to laugh or anything. Why, who'd laugh? <laughs> now, look, Commissioner, we're your pals. We're trying to help you. I don't know. TV, you haven't said anything. What do you think? <laughs> Bachelors, I'm going home. <laughs> back here. Anybody got a cigarette? Where do you get smokes when you're in jail, Sam? It's tough. You can't even get beer out there. Well, I'd give you a cigarette, but we're almost to the lady's house, and we commission. That's right. How about putting the handcuffs on him, Chief? It'll look better. I don't need the handcuffs. I'll behave. You're darn right, you will. The judge will slap another 30 days on you. At least. Look, here we are, Chief. Yeah, there's a light downstairs. Leela's either still up or still scared. Good either way. Come on, Sam, get out. Snap the bracelet on, Chief. Okay. This is just for a few minutes, Sam. I ought to get time off for this. 
I'll give you a cigarette after. Yeah. Come on. Now, you fellas stay down here while I go up and knock on the door, see? I got this. Get a little of this porch light on Sam so she can see the handcuffs. Okay. And try to look a little tougher, will you, Sam? I'll try, but I ain't no Dillinger, you know. You can say that again. Well, go ahead, Commissioner. When she opens the door, I holler, Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thanks for helping us catch the criminal. Shh, not so loud. Well, here I go. Good luck. <laughs> Joe Moran is loose. Into the car, everybody. Yeah, Chief, where are you going? This is the county headache. Let them handle it. Hey, fellas, you don't need me, you dirty cowards. Do you have icebox raiders at your house? You know, those refrigerator pirates who must have a snack before going to bed. Well, if you have, then you should know it's a good idea to have a package of Velveeta stowed away. They'll really go for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And it's as digestible as the milk you urge them to drink. They can spread this delicious cheese food on crackers or slice it for bread. Or if it's toasted cheese sandwiches they want, Velveeta melts to perfection in just 45 seconds. It'll be a satisfaction for you mothers to know that Velveeta helps supply valuable nutrients from milk, including high-quality, complete proteins. That's why so many women are using smooth-melting Velveeta in Lenten main dishes. So when you shop, look for genuine Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. <laughs> TV, you missed a lot of excitement last evening. You went home too early. You think so? Yeah. I'll tell you something else. This county had better start looking for a better sheriff than Al Hoffmeyer. Two jailbreaks in one day. Who ever heard of such a thing? It was quite a coincidence. Yeah. How you ever let Moran get hold of a gun, I can't imagine. But just to turn the keys over to him, the man has no conception of his duty. Oh, well, isn't he a bad fellow? He uh, who picked him for sheriff anyway? He gets 4000 a year out there. For what? For being sheriff. Nothing to the job, as a dozen men could do it better. If I was sheriff, things would be different, Peavy, I can tell you that. Mr. Gellisane. Huh? Why don't you run for sheriff? Me? Sure, you've got a lot of friends in this town. If we all got behind you right now, by November... Now, might... Peavy, wait a minute. <laughs> After all, I'm water commissioner, and water's important, too. The department can, can, can't get along without me. Well, I think they are. <laughs> Well, it's a fact. But Hoffmeyer... Now, let's not be too hasty about judging Hoffmeyer. He had a little bad luck yesterday, but that can happen to anybody. All these fellows that go around knocking Hoffmeyer, I'm for Hoffmeyer. <laughs> Blow hard. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Hal Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Baked ham is a traditional Easter favorite. And if you'd like extra praise coming your way at next Sunday's Easter feast, we suggest you bake your ham under a crusty coating of brown sugar combined with tangy golden craft salad mustard. The fragrant spices, the fine mild vinegar, and the choice mustard seed of which craft salad mustard is made all add a delightful flavor tang to the ham, while the sugar coating helps seal in the savory juices. Get a jar of craft salad mustard from your dealer tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.